Okay, in this lesson we're going to look at some angle theorems. The first angle theorem we're going to look at is called the opposite angle theorem, also known as OAT, opposite angle theorem. So if I have two lines that are intersecting, okay, I know that the opposite angles are going to be equal to each other. So that means that this angle here is going to be the same as this one over there. And the conversely, the other two opposite angles are also going to be equal to each other. So if I take, for example, another intersection, I know that, let's say I find this to be 70 degrees, that means its opposite is also going to be 70 degrees. This one would be uh, 110 degrees, and that means that its opposite would also be 110 degrees. That is the opposite angle theorem where the opposite angles are equal to each other. Supplementary angle theorem is when you have uh, angles make up a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So here I have a straight line along the bottom. I know that all of these angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I have a 60 and a 50, okay, 60 plus 50 is 110. And I take 180, subtract that 110 degrees, that will leave me with a missing angle of 70 degrees. That would be right in the middle. So 70 degrees, and that was because of supplementary angles where they all have to add up to 180 degrees. So I have opposite angle theorem, I have supplementary angle theorem. Okay, a couple more angle theorems. The first one is for alternate angles. Now alternate angles can be formed by letter Z. So if I have a couple parallel lines, okay, these two lines are parallel. You see I have this line that intersects. I can make the letter Z right there. And on this letter Z, this angle and its alternate, which would be this one down here, are going to be equal to each other. So, for example, if this is 70 degrees, so will this angle down here be 70 degrees. Now, the letter Z can go in a variety of different ways. Maybe my parallel lines are going up and down, and I have my intersection going that way. I have the letter Z could be formed also kind of by an expanded version. This could be my letter Z right here. In that case, its opposite angle, or sorry, this angle and this angle, which are alternate angles, will be equal to each other. Okay. Next one is corresponding angles, which will be formed by the letter F. Again, take my parallel lines, and I have the letter F right here. Okay. And in the letter F, this angle and this angle will both be equal to each other. Okay, so if this one is, let's say, 110 degrees, so will this angle down here be 110 degrees. Now that letter F could also be made going in different directions. So maybe it's going backwards, F, in which case those two angles, again, would be equal to each other. Okay, so you have alternate angles equal to each other, you have corresponding angles that are made equal to each other. You can also have co-interior angles. It's formed by the C pattern. So here I'd have my letter C between my parallel lines and the co-interior are these two angles here inside your parallel lines and they're going to add up to 180 degrees. So if I have this as being let's say 120 degrees I know that these two angles must add up to 180 so therefore its other angle is 60 degrees. Okay, If you have, again, your C could go a variety of different ways. Maybe my parallel lines are going up and down. I have my intersection going uh, sideways. So X and Y are my two co-interior angles. And X plus Y is going to add up to 180 degrees. Here are a couple of examples. So I have parallel lines and I have 75 degrees. So using my angle theorems, let's figure out the missing angles. This is 75 degrees here. That means that this up top is also going to be 75 degrees. And that was determined by the opposite angle theorem. From this 75 degrees, okay, I could find out what angle B is. Because that forms the Z pattern. okay, And so that B would also be 75 degrees from using the Z pattern. And using the F pattern... Okay, the corresponding angles, this angle C is also 75 degrees. And I use the F pattern to find that. I use the Z pattern to find angle B. 
Okay. Here I have 40 degrees. Okay. I can figure out a few things. I can figure out angle Y down here. Okay. Again, using the F pattern. Okay. It's kind of a sideways F going down here. So that is also 40 degrees. And then using, using the F pattern. And then using the C pattern of the co-interior angles that we just covered up here, I know that X and Y must add up to 180, which leaves angle X being 140 degrees. And I use a C pattern to figure that out. Another way of justifying is knowing that my 40 and my 140 have to add up to 180 because they're on a straight line as well. So there's multiple ways to figure them out. All right, we just covered a few angle theorems. We covered opposite angle theorem, supplementary angle theorem, where they have to add up to 180 degrees. We covered alternate angles, the Z pattern, corresponding angles, the F pattern, and co-interior angles, the C pattern. Thank you very much.